Hi, and welcome to Fearless Fridays Power Up Tips. I'm Dr. Andrea Nitzaris, here today to talk to you about needs. And in this session, I'm just going to be talking about our level one physiological needs. A common misconception about our needs as human beings is that it, having a need is synonymous with being needy, implying that these are mere mental constructs or things that we make up. But the reality is our needs are connected to the chakras, they're connected to our motivation in life, and they're connected with our ability to stay on our path as human beings to individuation. These needs, when, when we're, we don't satisfy them, we feel the lack. It's like when we're hungry, we have hunger pains. And in our higher level needs, we, we actually experience things like depression or anxiety or, or just a feeling of meaninglessness or emptiness in our lives when our needs are not being met. And I'm going to be talking about needs over the next while because I think it's really important. We don't spend enough time in general really understanding our needs because we're so busy judging them. And Maslow came up with this great hierarchy of needs, which originally had five different levels of needs, but he then um, added another three to flush out more of these human drivers of behavior, making them eight. These appetites that we have that cause us to keep driving, to stay motivated, to, to keep being excited in our lives. Too often, though, people get stuck. They get stuck at a particular level and they continue to meet the, the need that they became stuck in. And as I said, today I'm going to be talking about this first level need, our physiological need, and what happens to us when we get stuck at level one. Of course, level one is about, you know, our physical appetites. We need to eat. We need to sleep. We need to care for our body. We need to clothe ourselves. We need to have shelter. These are common amongst all human beings. And, and it's at this very primary level that we, when we get stuck in survival, you see recurring themes or patterns around survival in human beings. You may look at the um, epidemic of obesity, for example, and say, wow, there sure are a lot of people that keep meeting this need to um, satiate their hunger over and over and over again, even when hunger does not even exist for them. So there are five thought patterns that, that I've pulled out that perpetuate the cycle of prioritizing physiological needs. And, and when an individual is preoccupied, and that means that the brain is on a loop, it, and, and it's a survival loop, it, it's preoccupied with meeting physiological needs, and people are in a cycle of worry and preoccupation, predominantly focused on meeting these needs, food, sleep. Um, physical safety, for example. And, and so their mental and emotional energy is being diverted into that, even though they may have enough food, they may have enough money, they may be perfectly fine, but their thought patterns haven't caught up with the reality of their daily life. So here are the thought patterns that typically reinforce this cycle. And the first and foremost in poverty consciousness or scarcity mentality in this mindset is rooted in a fear of not having enough. And people with this worry excessively about having not enough food, water, or other basic resources. And as a result, they stockpile these items. These are hoarders. 
They have a pantry full of food that in a lifetime they may never be able to eat. And they plan and they clip coupons and they go shopping for bargains because of their preoccupation with food. They actually believe, even though there's evidence to the contrary, that they will never have enough to survive. Another mindset is around hypervigilance toward health. And while a concern for health is natural and essential, people can be obsessed, constantly worried about every single thing that goes into their mouth. The fear of potential illness, hypochondriacal people will stay up worrying at night about a pain that they are, have convinced themselves that it's cancer or some other um, life-threatening illness. And they may become preoccupied with other body signals that they don't see as normal. And so after, you know, exercising um, for a long period of time, muscle st stiffness to them might not be normal and natural. They might consider it as something that means that they shouldn't be exercising because their body can't tolerate it. The state of constant worry again, and we look at how the energy now it's going into that, into that preoccupation with the body. And then, of course, it can be that same anxiety around sleep and concerns about not getting enough sleep. And this is self-perpetuating. The more one worries about sleep, of course, the more difficult it is to fall asleep. And then this leads to unhealthy habits, the use of sleep aids. Um, and disruptive sleep schedules as well. Waking up in the middle of the night and being afraid that you're not going to go back to sleep is certainly the biggest cause of not falling back asleep. Food fixation is also, you know, I alluded to this in, in, the, in the first two around the preoccupation with food, but we can have a really unhealthy relationship with food when we're stuck at this level, obsessing over our next meal, overeating as a form of comfort, or being overly concerned about the nutritional content or the caloric value of every single thing that goes into to, to, to one's mouth. And, and also that always sorting, oh, this is good for me and I feel guilty and I eat this. And, and, and so this fixation takes up a substantial amount of mental and emotional energy, really le le leaving little room for ever getting past this level one. And the final is, is a fear of physical discomfort. Stuck at this level, you may harbor a pervasive fear of any form of physical discomfort, going back to my example of, you know, uh, uh, sore muscles because of lactic acid buildup and, you know, I can't move, being too hot or too cold or, you know, the fear of being physically exhausted and so never putting yourself out so that you never, ever, ever experience any sort of physical discomfort or pain. And this fear can cause people to not move, to not step out of their comfort zone. And, and so, for example, you, you know, one might have some problems with, with muscle tension or muscle pain. And instead of doing more exercise or doing yoga to stretch out or going to a chiropractor, they might start with going and getting muscle relaxant, relaxants from the drugstore and not moving until the pain goes away. And so, so you see the powerlessness when one is stuck at this level, stuck in the obsession of physical survival, all the while already having survived just like keeping yourself in grade five <laughs> grade one when you've already graduated and you, you know you've moved on to grade two you are here and you don't realize that you're stuck because of your habits of mind so what do you do about it and of course this is all about fearless friday's power up tips 
So the first thing one needs to do is really keep a journal on and notice how much time do I actually spend thinking about food, concerning myself with sleep, worrying about my physical body, catastrophizing about problems in my body, not going out to social situations where you have to eat out because you've already eaten as many calories as you've restricted yourself to in a day. So so the first thing is building awareness, building awareness of how much time you spend and how much energy you spend in this place, meeting your physiological needs. Breaking free requires this level of awareness and letting go. It's like I notice and I refocus myself on the higher level needs, which I'll be getting to in our next sessions. And if you want more information about our needs, we're also doing a series on our podcast on dismantling each and every one of our needs through understanding how our brain focuses our attention on a need we get stuck there and that our actual task in life is to individuate, to get to those higher level needs to fulfill our potential, but we can't do that while our energy is still trapped at this level one. So I'm Dr. Andrea Saris. I hope you find this informative and useful, and I look forward to seeing you and hearing back from you about how you're finding my Fearless Friday topics in our podcast and our YouTube channel videos at drenitsaris-hilliard.com. Bye for now.